Joining me right now is Republican strategist and former chair of the Nevada Republican Party, Amy Tarkanian. Good morning to you, Amy. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, well, let's play first, before we start, a little clip of what Ron DeSantis had to say uh, in a speech uh, put out on social media. Here is what he told the waiting American public. If we don't have a clear path to victory, accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. I'm proud to have delivered on 100% of my promises, and I will not stop now. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. Winston Churchill once remarked that success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. Well, that was what Ron DeSantis had to say to the American voting public. Amy Tokenian, how significant is this announcement from Ron DeSantis? Sure. Well, it's not actually a surprise because he was struggling right out of the gate. And even the top people who were running his pack had removed themselves already some time ago. Um, and so there was already turmoil happening. Uh, you know, he can go back to being governor and, and just succeed there. And if he really wants to run again, he can do that um, in 2028. Uh, Donald Trump is only allowed to have one more term because he's already served one term. Uh, and so I, I think that this was, um, you know, hopeful and helpful for candidate Nikki Haley. Um, this will allow her to maybe get some of his delegates, but it does seem, though, that since he is supporting Donald Trump, that most of Ron's uh, supporters will probably go to Donald Trump. Yeah, indeed. I mean, he was seen as being, you know, Donald Trump without the baggage. He would certainly be my preferred candidate mm -hmm. if I was an American voter. But um, it's very unlikely that Nikki Haley is going to pick up enough support to beat that extraordinary 30-point uh, lead that uh, Donald Trump had in the Iowa caucuses last week over Ron DeSantis, even higher uh, over Nikki Haley. She came out fighting yesterday. She said, look, you know, neither Donald Trump nor Joe Biden is up to the job. She, you know, they're as bad as each other, she said. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have the New Hampshire primary tomorrow. Uh, we're going to get those results. We're talking about it on the show, no doubt, tomorrow and on Wednesday. It is, it is very likely. We've got another month, I think, to the next one. It, it is perfectly likely that Donald Trump at this point is totally unstoppable, and we're down to the one final candidate by the end of the week, surely. Sure. And, you know, out of the 2,429 delegates that are needed, um, you need actually the majority of those to secure the nomination. And, and actually, if Nikki can continue any, any type of momentum and keep the money coming in, then she can maybe make it to super, what we call Super Tuesday on March 5th. And that's where a third of those delegates are allocated. But if she cannot keep up with those two um, scenarios, then she will also find herself, unfortunately, most likely endorsing Donald Trump since that first debate where all but two had raised their hand and saying that they would support him if he were the nominee. Indeed. Um, and in terms of where we are in the polls, obviously, you know, as, as Ron DeSantis says, it looks very much like, you know, this is what the, the Republicans, they want to have Donald Trump have another go. In terms of Trump versus Biden, there's a lot of people saying that the Biden administration want to fight against Donald Trump. He polarizes views. But in some of the key swing states, he's doing better than he did in 2020, better than he did even in 2016, Donald Trump. So maybe be careful what you wish for, Joe Biden. Right. And, and I think, um, too, with now it just being two individuals on the GOP side, you know, the polls will slowly start to, to get changed. You know, they'll change as well, because Nikki actually shows that she does better head to head with Joe. But she has to get past Donald Trump first, yeah. and that's going to be a, quite an uphill battle. Um, and so then we're looking at, again, a re-election, or not a re-election, but uh, a head-to-head, -head, once again, of Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And I think what we're seeing here is you have a country that's really concerned about the economy, about our safety, um, about uh, you know inflation. 
And it seems that Joe is asleep at the wheel. Yeah. And it seems that Donald Trump, with all of his chaos and all of his toxicity, he comes across as someone who is bold and brash and strong and will go and get the job done, um, you know, even though he's a bull in a china shop. Now, he's not my candidate of choice, but I think that's what we're feeling. That's what the people are feeling, and that's why they're going yeah, with him. Absolutely. Amy Tarkanian, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Much appreciate that.